Teachers have been bringing in guest speakers to their classroom for years. But with modern technology, that guest speaker doesn't need to actually physically be present anymore. They can just Skype in, or what we call video conference. YouTube has built-in video conferencing that I think puts it at the top of preferred tools. It has the ability not only to record and stream live, but also to archive that footage for later. Additionally, other schools around the world could tune in and watch what's happening. Let me show you how video conferencing works as part of YouTube Live. We start, of course, by heading over to YouTube and opening up the Creator Studio, which is under your avatar in the upper right-hand corner. From here, go to Live Streaming, and then click on Events. You can see that I already have a testing event here, and we're going to need to create a new event. Go over to the upper right-hand corner and click on New Live Event. In the title field, you can set your descriptive title. Click down into the calendar area and you can set a day and time where the event is going to start. In the description area, you can put text and link. And then down here in the tags area, you can add a few tags that will help people to discover your video. Let's look at the privacy of this and make it public. And then we're going to choose between the two options for streaming. We're going to choose quick using Google Hangouts on air. That will allow us to video conference. There's some other settings under advanced settings where you might want to not enable live chat. I'm leaving it as it is. And now we're ready to create the event by clicking on the create event button, which would have just said go live if I had not set this event for the future. When the event is created, you'll see it listed here in your events. And the benefit of scheduling it ahead of time is that there is a link right here. I'm going to right click and open in a new tab. This link is where the video will be hosted. And you can share that link out ahead of time with families and other people. You can see that there's a countdown timer here. And people could also click on the set reminder button if they would like to be notified on their mobile device when the event goes live. Also up here in the URL, this is the link that you share with everybody. It's also the link where the video will be archived once it's completed, once the live broadcast is over. So when you're ready to go, head back over to the Creator Studio and we're gonna start the Hangout On Air by clicking the button, Start Hangout On Air. Now don't worry, things aren't actually starting right now, they're just letting us set things up. The first thing you'll notice is that a window is gonna open up and you're gonna see your face. You'll notice at the very bottom of the screen it says off air, which means you're not broadcasting. And if you move your cursor, you'll see a number of tools that you can use. I've got my microphone on, my camera on, and I can click on the invite people button to bring in my guests. This is where I add the email addresses of the people I want to video conference with. Today, I'm just conferencing with one person, so I'll just type her email address in here, and then I'm going to click the Invite button. Now, this is going to happen live. As soon as I click Invite, she will get an invitation. Essentially, her Google Hangouts will begin ringing. So at this point, we are just waiting for her to answer. She answers, you'll see her pop up in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Hey there, Lisa. Hi, Patrick. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining. Um, as you know, I'm doing a tutorial right now on, uh, for my book, 50 Ways to Use YouTube in the Classroom, and wanting to share with teachers um, how they can bring experts into their classroom like I'm bringing you into my office here today. Excellent. So thanks for joining. It sounds like uh, our audio is working well, which is, uh, of course, what we would be doing right now before we start broadcasting. And I'll just point out to the folks watching the tutorial that you can see in Hangouts here we are off air. And uh, you can also see that Lisa and I, when we're talking, the microphone changes the focus of the camera. And so when Lisa's talking, she pops on the screen. And when I'm talking, I pop on the screen. So Lisa, if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and hit start broadcast and we're going to actually start streaming live to the world. Sounds great. Okay, here we go. I'm hitting start broadcast. Okay, and we're live. Hey, everybody out there. This is Patrick Green, author of 50 Ways to Use YouTube in the Classroom. 
And today I wanted to bring in Lisa Highfill, one of the co-authors of the HyperDocs Handbook, so she can share with us a little bit about her book. Thanks for joining us today, Lisa. Thanks for having me, Patrick. Yeah, it's great to have you. So uh, we'll just jump into the questions. First of all, what is a HyperDoc? It is a digital lesson that teachers create, package it on uh, a web tool such as a Google Doc, Google Slides, Google Sites, and give it to the kids. It changes um, the way they deliver instruction and the way kids experience learning. Uh, so it's basically a digital lesson. Cool, digital lessons, uh, right where students are living in their uh, digital world, their yes. world. Uh, so why did you write this book? Well, I um, left the classroom uh, after uh, being a, te a fifth grade teacher and became an instructional tech coach and saw teachers really frustrated getting all these Chromebooks in their classroom and not sure what to do beyond having them type essays or just get on websites. And they were losing that good instructional design. So we kind of married uh, UDL, you know, good lesson design with technology and, and try to bring in that blended learning piece too. Like you're offline, you're online. We want to bring in all those good learning pieces um, and, uh, and give them a solution to not be over teaching, not be lecturing, letting kids have a little more agency by giving them the lesson and saying, I trust that you'll know what to do here. And it frees you from the classroom and lets you be with your students while they're experiencing this learning. Cool. So it sounds like uh, by giving students the lesson and giving them ownership, teacher gets to move to more of a facilitator role. Yes. You know, and we had heard that and we've been researching that and, and you hear all these best practices, but they needed something concrete to make that happen. They kept saying, this sounds great. I'd love to do that, but how do I do that? And so we taught them how to make HyperDocs, which is you know, kind of, uh, we gave them a template and said, look, here's the lesson design. We want you to get kids exploring first, and then you explain your content, and then let them apply their knowledge. Show, let them show you what they know, and that was really an important part of it. They are not a Google Doc with links. They have distinct lesson design in it that is really purposeful. The teachers are getting away from being assigners and becoming designers. That's one of our phrases in our book that we like to talk about. Nice. Designers of learning. Okay, yeah. assigners. Not assigners, but designers of learning. Cool. So who should be buying this book, Lisa? This is for people who are ready to start integrating technology into their classroom. You're ready to um, get beyond just using um, a website or just typing or doing using tech for research, but really using it for great instruction. Uh, our handbook is, uh, that's what it is, the handbook. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. It explains the pedagogy behind it. And it includes a lot of HyperDoc uh, examples that you can use right away in your classroom. Great. Well, Lisa, I, I really just wanted to do a quick hitter of three questions about the HyperDocs handbook. So thank you so much for joining us. And folks that have tuned in, uh, I want to point out that the link to... Lisa's book is in the description of the video, so you can click down there, get over to Amazon. If you are a teacher who is ready to uh, start integrating technology into your classroom and focus on being a designer, not an assigner. So uh, thanks, Lisa, for joining us. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. And goodbye, YouTube world. Until next time. And I've stopped the broadcast there by hitting the stop broadcast button. And uh, Lisa, you and I are still recording um, as we're working on this tutorial for uh, YouTube. Um, but I just want to say that uh, af after you uh, hang out the author in, like I've just done with Lisa, um, and you stop the broadcast, this conversation that Lisa and I are having right now is not broadcasting to the world, but we're still able to talk. So I can thank Lisa I could say goodbye. If my students were asking questions, we'd all probably wave and say thanks so much. So I'm going to do that now. Lisa, right, great. thanks for joining. This has been so helpful, and hopefully yeah. we can uh, help spread the word about your book as well. I'll be sharing out the link on my YouTube channel, and uh, we'll tweet it out there and uh, get more people being designers, not assigners. Thank you. Thanks so much, Patrick. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.
And so then I'm going to go up here to the Hey, uh, the Leave Call button, and uh, you can see that Lisa's already left the call. And this Hangout on air is now over. I can hit the Close button. And if I go over to the original link that I shared, you can see that it's done playing, and it says thanks for tuning in, and the stream ended 82 seconds ago. But... Thank you. Thanks, Pat. And you can see that it's loading now. So if I pushed play and I ran it back to the beginning, this URL is where the, the whole thing is uh, archived. And people can access it and continue to access it. Now, if we head back over to the YouTube Creator Studio and go to the events, if we refresh it, you'll see that the event is no longer there. Uh, but if we go over to Video Manager, you'll find the video. And I can have, uh, here it is, three questions with Lisa Highfill, and I can edit some of the information and settings if I need to update anything like, for example, add a custom thumbnail. Bringing in busy guest speakers from around the world to your classroom just got a lot easier with YouTube Live. And I'd love to know how other teachers are using this feature. Please let me know in the comments below. And subscribe if you're wanting to get more videos like this coming your way. Lastly, check out my book, 50 Ways to Use YouTube in the Classroom, over at youtubeclassroom.com. Thanks for watching.